Greetings, people of YouTube. Uh, Wayne Hackman here, aka Waxstar. Um, thank you for um, viewing and rating and subscribing and all doing all the things that YouTubers do. Um, I just wanted to do a quick video response. So I do apologise in advance um, the quality of this video. It's done on a very cheap Microsoft webcam um, upstairs. I can't be bothered to go down to my office. I've just been running a youth group and enjoying a G&T. Uh, just before I go to bed, but I've had a few questions um, that I wanted to respond. It would be easier to do a video response than to type um, regarding migrating settings from one PBX over to the Raspberry Pi PBX that obviously people are creating. And I'm really exciting that excited that my very basic tutorials have inspired people to to experiment with home phone automation. Um, and the Raspberry Pi so far for me has been a really brilliant, brilliant option. But what happens when we were at migrate settings? Well, I did have an old server, an old Dell phone server that was running all of my phones in my house and the incoming trunks and everything like that. And I too wanted to migrate my settings from that server to the PBX. Now I have to say, there's a little caveat, my video tutorials make it um, uh, suggest that it's very easy to get PBX running on, um, on your Pi, and it is. If you're doing a basic flat beginning install, you can have a PBX server running up in no time. The issue that I came, and I didn't suggest this in my original videos because I didn't want to put people off doing it, uh, the, the issue I had was migrating settings, and I, I will admit I am a complete Linux novice. Everything that I learn, I learn from reading um, forums, I Google my problems that I have and I find the problems and, and I try and troubleshoot and, and, uh, and I persevere long enough and enough trial and error that I get things le working and that, that's just the way that I learn. Um, I can never remember code in terminal, I have to go and find it and remind myself. Um, so a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk about, if I don't have the detail, I'll try and put in the description below. Um, so I have my old server and my new Pi server that I'd created and I wanted to migrate to the settings. And so I learned very quickly that both um, the old server and the Pi server needed to have identical distributions of free PBX. What do I mean by that? Well, basically, uh, the software that's running on both servers need to be exactly the same. And so this is what I did. I had to update the old server so that it had the same version of free PBX that was on the Raspberry Pi. Now, just another little um, um, a pointer is what you'll you'll notice now that if you're using the distribution that's on the asterisk to to Raspberry Pi website, which I'll put in below, um, there is actually later cores, later uh, later distribution that you can download off the website. So, what I did was um, what you can do is you can update both servers. But this is really important by going into the module section on the drop-down menus when you log on to your free PBX. Um, um, through your web browser, you need to make sure that both servers have exactly the same modules, exactly the same core, um, and the exactly the same uh, update. And so what you might need to do is both update your Raspberry Pi and your old server to make sure that everything is identical. Now, a little word of warning, and I had to learn the hard way. Um, what I discovered was that um, I wanted to be clever and I went to terminal and, and there is a, a, a command in in, um, uh, um, in the Linux terminal which you can update everything that's on there and you know, your machine goes out onto the internet, drags down all of the latest distributions of things and updates it. What I found was that when I didn't update in terminal, it went out and did the update and everything was fine and then it came back to me and, um, um, and free PBX stopped working. And because basically I damaged the links between free PBX and Apache web server, which is quite important. Um, now, I'm sure if I was a real clever technological buff, I would have been able to tap some code and solve the problem. But I didn't, and I had to rebuild uh, the Pi um, to get it working. And then what I learned was, was I did all of the updates within the, the web login, the, the, the module update section that's in free PBX. And, and so I would advise you, and now all of the updates I do on the Pi, I do via that way because I don't want to damage the, um, uh, the distribution of free PBX. 
And so, um, so make sure everything's up to date. Once you've got that file, then you can do the backup. So you go back to your old server, and, and you go onto that server, and you connect, um, connect a USB key, and there are tutorials online that will teach you how to mount it in terminal. Um, and so you connect a USB key, and then you go to the free PBX on a web browser, and you instigate a backup. It's uh, one of the, the options on the drop-down menus, and you do a backup. And I did, I did a full configuration backup. I didn't bother about all of the audio um, or the voicemails, uh, but I did do a configuration backup, which configured all of the trunks, my IVR, and also uh, all of the extensions that I had. It came to about 26 megabytes. Once that was done, I had to then um, uh, dig around, and I found where Asterix, which is the bit under free PBX that, that is, um, um, manages the call, I found where it installed that backup. Um, so I found the file corresponding to the backup that I just made. I copied it onto that USB key. I unmounted the USB key, and then I shut that server down. Um, that's really important because actually my old server had an IP address, a, a fixed IP address, um, and all of the extensions were connecting to that. So I shut that down. I booted up the Pi, um, mounted the USB key in terminal, and then I went, I logged onto the free PBX on that Pi, and I went and did a backup, a full backup. Um, and what that does is generates all of the folders and the subfolders necessary for you to then go onto your USB key and copy that configuration backup into the same place where that backup had just taken place. And you'll have to dig around, and again, I'll try and find the necessary documentation and, and put it below that, that, will, that will help you. Once you've done that, you can then go back into the backup and the drop down menu. You can then, instead of clicking on doing a backup, there's a restore tab. And what you will find is that new backup that you've just copied from your USB key is there. You can click on that, do the restore, and hey presto, all being well, all of your extensions, all of your trunks, all of your settings for your IVRs will reappear. And then what I had to do is I quite simply chain, fix the IP address of the Raspberry Pi to what the IP address of the old server was and uh, did a reboot and boom, all of the extensions picked up, um, all of my trunks were operational, I was able to make calls and all I had to do was tweak my IVI, I wanted to change that uh, uh, anyway, you know, the, my welcome settings and stuff like that. So, so that's, that's pretty much how I did it. And as usual, I, I'm very happy to answer questions. I greatly appreciate you um, watching. And I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed by the, the, the kindness and the generosity and, uh, of, of people's comments and, um, and asking questions. I'm a novice. And um, I, if you're an expert and watching that and you have something to add, I would encourage you to do a video response or, or, or comment below. Um, please don't treat me like an idiot um, because I'm learning. I'm, I'm not, I don't have any background in, in computer engineering. It's just a, a passion, a little hobby that I have. Anyway, I can genuinely say today, have one on me and thank you for watching.